Hello, my dear students. Today we are going to study on pleated oval. This would be MTP 203, Unit 2, a pleated oval. This means of obtaining a dyed or resist oval leads itself to numerous interpretations. First, each oval can be pleated, bound and dyed as a separate shape on a dyed or undyed ground. Second, an oval shape can be reserved on a dyed ground. Third, several individual shapes can be grouped together in any direction to form floral and leaf designs. Fourth, the oval can be extended to form diamond and circular shapes or elongated to produce narrow stripes suitable for depicting stems and narrow leaves. Method Where any repetition of the oval occurs, a template should be made by halving the shape lengthwise. Fold the cloth over double along the center of the required oval. Mark and keep the double cloth in position. The oval is now ready to be folded into small pleats, arranged in a manner of a fan, beginning at the folded edge and working along the pencil. Right to the left. Make a series of pleats approximately one eighth to half an inch across with the thumb and four fingers. This means that the curved pencil outline is now pleated up closely and is straightened out. Whereas the straight folded edge of cloth is radiating from it in a semi circle like a fan. Make a firm but narrow binding on the pencil line and fasten off. From this point, the pattern is determined by the manner of dyeing and the amount of binding applied to the oval.
to dye individual ovals. When these pleated ovals are being treated separately, need careful and exact dyeing. For this purpose, a small shallow bowl is recommended. Mix up the full quantity of dye liquor needed for the whole sample in a separate vessel. Make the depth of the dye in a small bowl equivalent to the height of a fan-like pleats from the binding to the highest point. Refill the bowl with fresh dye from the stock vessel after every two or three ovals have been dyed or replenish by adding a little dye after each one has been dyed. A little binding may be added before dyeing the first color if desired. Invert each fan-like shape separately into the dye up to the ridge of the binding. After it has been dyed, Squeeze each fan between the thumb and the four fingers or press it against the side of the bowl to express the surplus dye. Rinse the small portions that has been dyed immediately to prevent the dye from spreading up beyond the binding or accidentally touching of the rest of the sample. When several ovals are being dyed in this manner, it is a good plan to have some clean old cloth or newspaper handy. It can be used to soak up the excess moisture after rinsing. To do this, wrap the newspaper or cloth around the small pleated shape and squeeze. Repeat if necessary. There are now colored ovals on an undyed ground. After the ovals have been dyed separately, further binding may be added to each one and the entire sample immersed in a second dye. This gives a dyed oval on a ground of a different color, rinse and dry. A third color can be introduced by dipping the extreme tips of the small fan shape in a darker or brighter dye. This gives the impression of a central vein to each oval. With darker dye on the tips can be applied also with a brush. The extreme edges of the dyed oval may be brushed over with bleach. Rinse thoroughly, dry and untie. Resist ovals on a dyed ground. Mark out, pleat and bind the oval as described for number one. The amount of binding each individual fan-like shape receives will decide the kind of resist effect produced. A. A clear-cut solid resist oval is formed if the binding covers the shape completely in a double layer. Or the bound shape is painted over with melted wax and a cold dye used. B. A partial resist will be formed with lettuce or open binding giving a texture somewhat resembling the veins of the leaf. C. A resist outline of the oval like a letter O is all that remains if the binding is confined to a narrow band along the pencil line. Although several colors may be used in this method, gives pleasant results if the sample is dyed once, relying for its effect on a variety of textures formed by the different kinds of binding. 
A full rich color is preferable in this case to give plenty of contrast between the dyed and the resist area. After binding, immerse the whole sample in the dye bath, rinse and dry. Add more binding before dyeing a second or third color. Rinse dry and untie. Iron off any wax which remains. Rinse after untying is necessary. Any of the ovals can be repeated at intervals over the cloth to form an all over pattern. Third, groups of ovals. The oval shapes produced by this technique can easily be adapted to represent petals and leaves, which, when suitably grouped, give attractive floral designs, as each petal or leaf must be big enough to pleat and bind separately. It is rather difficult to work on too small a scale. Method Draw the entire design on the fabric. Fold each leaf and petal or oval in half lengthwise when pleat and bind as described for number one. When making separate petals for a flower, it may be necessary to make a small binding in the center to connect them together. Dye according to the requirements of the design. Variations on the basic shape. Other shapes produced by the tins method are carried out in exactly the same way as the oval. The only difference between the shape marked on the cloth below the central fold in the first place along which the pleats are made. Vary the size of the shapes as required. Diamond Method Draw in pencil below the central fold of the cloth a shallow triangle equivalent to the diamond cut in half lengthwise or across the shorter diagonal. This means that the wider angle of the diamond unless 
they are all equal becomes the angle at the apex of the triangle. Put a pin or tacking stitch X in the double cloth and at the apex of the triangle to prevent the underside from slipping while the pleating process is carried out. Pleat the cloth as in number one, giving special care to the apex of the triangle which has to be flattened out and brought into line with the rest of the outline. Bind along the pencil line and add more for a textured shape as for a pleated oval. Dye as required. A narrow pleated strip method along a folded edge of cloth which represents the central line of the strip mark half the outline of the shape. Crease the double cloth into small pleats from right to left along the pencil line to form a compact mass. Place a narrow but firm binding around the pleat, pleated bundle to coincide with the pencil line. Add binding if a wider resist area is required. Dye, rinse, dry and untie. This method is useful for depicting narrow leaves or stems. It can also be introduced as a motive in a repeat design. A strip that changes direction. Draw the center line in a strip on the cloth. This can be a gradual curve, an open V shape or double bend. A large scale spiral could be tackled, but it would require careful handling and would need to be pinned at intervals. A large hollow circle or oval in the shape of an O is possible in this method. Make a crease along the pencil line which can now be looked on as the central fold. Proceed to bunch up the double cloth into small pleats. Just below the folded edge, secure with a narrow binding just below the fold. Dye the whole sample or paint dye on the folded edge along. This can be done after the first color has been dyed. On a sample that has been previously dyed, these edges could be bleached. Circle, 
A circle is made in exactly the same way as an oval, except that a semicircle is drawn at the folded edge of the cloth. using a safety pin for pleated ovals. Very much the same effect as pleated ovals. Diamonds and circles can be achieved if a large safety pin is woven in and out at the intervals along the penciled outline from right to left. This forms pleats when the safety pins has enclosed the complete shape, close it, make a narrow binding immediately below the closed pin to retain the pleats in position, then move the pin. The sample should now appear, bind as required, repeat for each individual shape. Thank you.